Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more relationship stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. Well, let's crack on with today's first story, which is titled, Am I the Asshole for Eating Too Many Cucumbers? This is perhaps the most bizarre Am I the Asshole post I've ever written, but I'm honestly so confused. Like, I feel like I can't possibly be the arsehole, but then sometimes people are too blind to see their own flaws, so maybe I really am. For as long as I can remember, I've had this quirk. I guess you could call it that. I never snack on anything other than a cucumber. I shouldn't say never technically, since socially I'll get ice cream or eat a few chips at a party. I'm not a picky eater by any means, but my snack of choice has always been cucumbers. I eat pretty healthily anyways, so a lot of fruits and veggies are part of my diet. Since veggies are lower in calories, I have to eat a lot of them to eat enough. So I usually have some sliced cucumber in my purse that I'll munch on throughout the day. And I'll always have a cucumber in my car that I just eat whole when I'm driving. I go through several cucumbers daily. Although it's not healthy, I've had days where I've felt really depressed and overwhelmed and have binge eaten nothing but cucumbers. I think I've eaten perhaps 35 on very extreme days. Recently, this quirk has begun to drive my 22 female boyfriend, 33 male, of six months insane. His words, not mine. He says it's highly inappropriate to carry them everywhere with me. We spent last weekend at his parents' lake house and I provided my own cucumber to snack on. One night before bed, I was in my room gnawing on a cucumber like a savage when his mother walked in. Under normal circumstances, I never would eat that around others. I'd slice it up. She was puzzled and chuckled and said, My, you do like a cucumber. My boyfriend later told me that I, I humiliated him with my childish and immature eating habits. I told him that his mum caught me in a low moment. He was being ridiculous since he eats bags of chips every day and I don't bat an eye. He told me that chips were a normal snack and whole cucumbers were deranged. He told me I needed to stop eating cucumbers and that my behavior was becoming a deal breaker for him. I feel really bothered, but I think cucumbers are a weird hill to die on and I don't want to lose my relationship. So, am I the asshole? Edit. I'd just like to add that my boyfriend has never expressed any issue with my cucumber habits before now. The incident in question was because around 8pm I was getting really hungry and I don't know his family super well so I didn't want to go rummaging or ask for a snack. I didn't want to bother them by asking for a cutting board or something to cut up my cucumber because of, well, mild social anxiety. So I shut myself in the guest room and figured I'd just snack on a cucumber quick. I don't usually go and hide and eat cucumbers, lol. But then his mum walked in, looking for my boyfriend presumably. I was a little surprised but seemed amused and not upset or anything. I honestly didn't think it would turn into such a big deal for him. Now, when I was younger, I used to love a cucumber snack. I would, I'd take the whole cucumber out of the fridge and I'd be out like with my mates and whatever playing football, eating this whole cucumber, you know, running around with this thing. But 35 cucumbers? But I'm not saying you're the asshole for it at all. And I got to ask the question myself, you know, there's different types of cucumbers. Some are shorter or not. I'm, I'm the one that I've got in my head at the moment is like a typical... British cucumber, I think. I say a British cucumber, it might not even be, but you find it in the supermarkets and they're about a foot long. So I'm thinking about 35 of these end to end. Holy shit. A deleted user says, not the asshole. Dump your boyfriend and enjoy your cucumbers. Note, I personally find cucumbers disgusting. And it would still never occur to me to care about this. Sir replies that and says, this isn't a quirk. It's disordered eating. The boyfriend may be an asshole, but this is by no means a quirk or even remotely normal. She does have a problem. I'd be concerned about this too, although probably not because my mum saw her eat it. Habitat Green says, I know, right? And OP, I devour whole cucumbers all the time. End bits and all. I love them as well. I don't feel bad about eating cucumbers and I doubt his mother made that remark to put you down. To me, it sounded more like an observation, an attempt to make a little small talk. Here's the one with the problem, not you. Habitat comes in with their own little story again and says, I frequently get those long ones and never bother cutting them up. I've once been the weirdo though with those. I was waiting at the train station and I had two of those long bell peppers in my coat. The pockets were deeper than they seemed, but they still sticked out. However, a woman sat next to me on the other side of where I kept the bell peppers and was unable to see them. And then I pulled one out of my coat and began to eat it. She was like, okay, whatever. 
However, then I pulled another one of those out of seemingly nowhere for her. And she visibly had a look of what the fuck on her face. It was very funny. Rat fight was thinking along my lines and said, Hey, cucumber connoisseur. Are we talking about slicing cukes, kirbys, gherkins, English cukes? There's a big difference between eating 35 gherkins and 35 English cucumbers. That's almost 41 feet of cucumbers on a bad day. Take Nordic alien replies that said, I'm wondering this too. The cucumber I buy are a foot and a half long, about two inches in diameter, and slice up would fill two and a half to three cups. Considering they're around 95% water, that's around 12 to 14 liters of water. More than enough to kill a person. I'm guessing and hoping OP means gherkins. Edit, more like 12 to 14 liters. I think I was doing an estimate for peeled cucumber, which would fill about two cups each, or maybe I just can't math. Giovanni says, no one's an asshole here. Your boyfriend is right that this behavior sounds extreme. 35 cucumbers in a day also sounds almost unbelievable, especially if they're normal sized ones I'm thinking of. Snacking on whole cucumbers is bound to be awkward when you don't slice them, so I can't blame his mum for being a little unsettled by the sight, nor your boyfriend for being somewhat exasperated by it. It sounds almost like cucumbers have become sort of a coping mechanism for you, and could there be some sort of compulsive behaviour involved? Obviously, your boyfriend shouldn't dictate whether you eat cucumbers or not, but might he just be worried that something seems off to him? You eat normally outside your cucumber diet. And one more comment from Milady Yell, who says no one's an asshole here. I'm going to speculate it's probably a combination of this sounds like disordered eating, a slow loss of insanity hearing the crunching sound. The dumbest shit will drive you insane if you're constantly exposed to it outside of your control. And yeah, you say yourself, you gnaw on whole cucumbers like a savage. And yes, that's probably embarrassing. Also, you shouldn't eat while driving. That is distracted driving and I can't imagine having one hand off the wheel holding a cucumber has never posed a problem. Stop doing that. You need to respect the responsibility you assume controlling a vehicle and take the safety for everyone on the road seriously. So OP does update the post and says, I didn't expect my first post to really get any attention. So I'd like to thank you all for taking the time to read it and give me your judgment. For those of you who express concerns for my cucumber addiction slash that I have an eating disorder, I can assure you I am perfectly healthy. I wouldn't consider myself addicted, nor do I have an eating disorder at all. I just enjoy my cucumbers. I can go days without eating them. I don't need my cucumber fix. It's just if I'm going to snack, I'd prefer to eat a cuke. I'll consider the amount I snack on cucumbers proportional to the amount my boyfriend or any normal person would snack on chips or other junk food. I just occasionally eat more since they're so low in calories. Additionally, I have a few cucumber binges. I'm well aware that those are not healthy, just like binging on junk food isn't healthy. But that's extremely uncommon for me. And for the most part, I eat a well-balanced, healthy diet. However, I will talk to my doctor about it to ensure that it is not worrying. As for my boyfriend, we ended up calling it quits. I was pretty hurt at first, but I think perhaps his huge reaction to cucumbers was indeed a red flag for controlling behavior. I think that he was trying to call my bluff, expecting me to give up my cukes for him. So the breakup took him a bit by surprise too. How it went down was that I told him that we needed to have a chat. I told him that it was unacceptable to tell me what I was allowed to eat. I added that if listening to me chow down on cucumbers was what bothered him, as some of you in the comments noted, I would avoid eating them when he was around. Apparently, the very idea of me eating so many cucumbers was driving him nuts, not the noise. I decided to try and compromise. He's a pretty heavy drinker and will get drunk pretty often. I know it's very bad for his health and I've expressed that concern in the past. I told him that I'd give up cucumbers if he gave up alcohol. He declined my offer, threw out a few uncreative insults and expletives, and now I'm writing this from my mum's couch with a cucumber in my hand and a cucumber in my heart. I'm, st <laughs> I'm still unclear on why the cucumbers were such an issue. Why I could never eat them again. Why me suggesting he give up alcohol was such a big deal, among other things. But I guess I'll never know now. Edit, thank you so much for the awards. I'm so honoured. I'm really glad to know those are hugs. I always thought they were judgmental Ewoks. I guess they do a little bit. Edit 2. I seem to have forgotten to add this as it was a common question on the original post and I'm seeing it in the comments now. No, I did not eat 35 of those mammoth cucumbers. My eating habits may be odd, but I'm not completely insane. <laughs> I think on my last cucumber binge, which occurs super rarely, that was quite a while ago, I had maybe 3 or 4 of the big ones and the rest were the mini cukes. 
I do buy a lot of them at the grocery store, but I have a cucumber dealer who hooks me up with huge batches. And for those of you upset at my use of the word cuke, here you go. May your lives be enriched. Edit three, just for some added clarification for those who think my boyfriend is completely justified in this cucumber hate and that I'm a lunatic. I agree, sort of. If he had been bothered by the chewing or concern about my health, I was ready to talk about it and work something out. I didn't enter into the discussion for a fight or with the intention of breaking up. His attempted grasp for control over my food wasn't even the reason why I broke up with him. But when he started shouting at me and called me a bitch, which he had never done before, I decided to end things. It just left me curious after this one. Who's OP's cucumber dealer? It just gave me this image of someone stood in a car park somewhere and they're just, you know, opening up their long coat with a whole selection of different types of cucumbers. Other side condiments. Want a bit of salt with that, maybe? <laughs> but what do you guys make of this one? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And let's move on to another story. And our next story comes from the Am I the Arsehole subreddit from Realistic Pirate 5663 and says, Am I the Arsehole for checking out of parental duties after my wife said I'm not the father? My wife and I have been married for about four years. She brought three kids from previous relationships into the marriage while I have none. They moved into my house after the marriage because I live in a better school district. Obviously, we've had our ups and downs, but overall it's been good until a couple of weeks ago when I woke up and found a large dent running down the entire passenger side of my car. The dent is about a hands wide, start at the front fender and runs all the way down to the rear tire. I was furious and thought someone sideswept my car as it was parked in the street. I checked our doorbell camera to see if it recorded anything and was surprised to see our 16 year old daughter sneaking out of the house in the middle of the night and driving off in my car. She later returned hours later, stumbling into the house. Outside of those two events, the doorbell camera didn't record anything else but a couple of passing cars that didn't come close to mine. I angrily showed my wife the recording and told her that her daughter needs to be punished but she said that she'll talk to her. I argued that the talk isn't enough which led us into an argument. My wife argued that the new family dynamic has been hard on the kids while I argued that it doesn't excuse the damage done to my car. I wanted her to agree to ground our daughter from social media and make her get a job to pay for the damage. We argued for hours until she said, I don't get a say in any punishment because I'm not her father. That ended the argument and I walked off. Since then, I've checked out of any parental duties. I've been an adult and still make sure the kids are safe and fed, but I haven't done anything a father would do. They had doctor's appointments last week for their checkups because they play sports in school and I refuse to drive them causing my wife to have to take time off work. They start school next week and I've dropped them off ever since they moved in, but I told my wife she'll have to do it this year. She argued she can't because of her work schedule and I answered a mother would figure it out. She called me a child and to grow up. I think since I'm not the father, I don't have to take on the responsibilities of one, but obviously she disagrees. Am I the arsehole? Edit. I was angry when I wrote it so I left out some info. My wife wants me to report it to my insurance as a hit and run. She said that way, no one has to pay for it. I argued that I'll have to pay for it in the long run because they jack up my rates. I'm not ignoring the kids and I still talk to them daily. I just don't do or make any parental decisions like I stated above. Also the other day, our son asked me if he should play basketball or football. and I told him to go ask his mother. Now you know me, I occasionally watch some of the daytime shit that comes on our TV. Like Nightmare Neighbors, you know I'm a big fan of that sort of stuff, right? Another one that's been on more recently is, well, I can't remember the name of it. I think it's like fraud interceptors or something like that, where they are basically some are intentionally crashing their cars. Others uh, have been drunk driving and then and then claimed on their insurance. Basically fraud. What your wife is asking you to do. And, and in some of these programs, as well as just fines, they've got some pretty hefty jail sentences as well. So, so I totally wouldn't go down what your wife is asking you to do right there, because that could get you in a lot of shit. But the wife's blasé attitude for this is really worrying from, you know, it didn't say it outright, but it almost implied that the daughter came home, was possibly drunk, where it said she later returned hours later and stumbling into the house. You know, it could be something else. But if that's the case, her underage daughter was drink driving, damaged someone's car and and the wife's just like, yeah, I'll have a chat to her. What the fuck? But Veteris says, and quotes, my wife wants me to report it to 
that my insurance is a hit and run. She said that way no one has to pay for it. Then says insurance fraud is a crime. Don't do it. You had better report the theft of your car and the accident to the police. She obviously hit something with it. And there's a good chance a camera somewhere recorded your car and it can be traced back to you. Then I think you should separate. Her daughter committed at least three serious crimes. Auto theft, drunk driving and a hit and run. She has put you at risk of being sued and possibly arrested. You can't live in a home where that behavior isn't dealt with. Edited to our judgment, everyone sucks here. Wife and daughter are assholes for obvious reasons. You're an asshole for not taking this seriously enough. For playing petty games about basketball and rice to school when there's a criminal in the house and her mother is enabling her. What else is she up to that you don't know about? Virtual Act says not the asshole, but your wife definitely is. What kind of mother is fine with her 16 year old daughter stealing a car, driving drunk and causing some sort of accident? If I did that, I wouldn't have a social life until I went off to college. Anonymous Head says not the asshole. Your wife doesn't get to pick and choose when you get to act like a parental authority. She's also wrong about the hit and run scenario. If you get it repaired, you'll have to pay for your deductible and it will jack up your rates. It's interesting that she thinks the way to deal with her daughter's behavior is to commit insurance fraud. But most importantly, this is a hugely significant problem. A 16 year old daughter snuck out at night and came home apparently drunk. I'm an insurance adjuster handling serious injury and fatality claims. I've had to speak to heartbroken parents of dead teenagers a sickening number of times. I've also had to look at scene photos of dead teenagers far too often. If your wife doesn't address this immediately and strongly, she's putting her daughter's life at risk. But now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And let's move on to another story. And our next story comes from Baby Shark Plate, who says, Am I the asshole for serving my 30 female sister in law, 32 female, dinner on a kid's plate? My husband and I have family dinners at our house every month or so with our family. I have some sets of fine china that I like to switch out between the seasons that I've inherited from my grandmother. When we have our get togethers, I serve dinner on these plates. My mother in law compliments them every time. My sister in law, however, has made comments to me that they're not her style. I honestly didn't think twice about her comments until this past February when one of my plates was put in the sink broken. I chalked it up to an accident. In April, we had another dinner. This time, sister-in-law was carrying both her and her boyfriend's plates to the sink and accidentally dropped both. Again, no biggie at all. In May, she broke two more plates and in June, she broke a plate and a cup. At this point, I was catching on. I brought up these concerns to my husband and he brushed it off as accidents. I told my mum and she said she thought my sister-in-law was doing it on purpose and got me a camera to put in my dining room. In July, we had dinner and had an opportunity arise. My mother-in-law, sister-in-law and her boyfriend joined us for dinner while our plates were still on the table. My mother-in-law asked how my plants were doing and I said I'd show her. I told my husband to follow us outside so we could show her the plant he's growing, leaving sister-in-law alone with her boyfriend. When we came back inside five minutes later, her plate was broken. When they left, I pulled up the camera footage. I saw a stand up when we walked out and peek around the corner and then throw the plate on the ground. I kept this video to myself. That brings me to this past weekend. We had our family dinner and we were joined by my in-laws, sister-in-law and her boyfriend as well as my parents, siblings and niece. I served everyone, saving evil sister-in-law for last. I brought her food out on a child's plate with a sippy cup and got those kids silverware with the plastic handles. She looked at me confused and said, I think you mixed my plate up with your niece's plate. And I said, no, niece's name is responsible enough to eat on a grown-up's plate. If you're going to act like a child in my home, I'm going to treat you like a child in my home. She tried to play coy, but I had my iPad ready and played the video to everyone at the table. She started sobbing, swiped the kid's plate off the table and stormed out. My mother-in-laws both apologized and offered to pay for replacement plates, but I told them not to worry about it. Despite this, we still had a nice time. When everyone left, my husband told me I was out of line and cruel. But I told him that this has been happening for months, and I've told him it was bothering me multiple times. It is Wednesday. He's still being a little cold to me. And I also got a text from my sister-in-law's boyfriend asking me if I would apologize to her because I really embarrassed her. I sent him the video again and he left me on red. My husband just called me to ask if I was taunting her boyfriend because his sister called him crying that I was. So, am I the arsehole? 
And I'm kind of hoping that there's a further update to this one in the future because I can't help that feel sister in law has got something else against OP as well. It can't be just about her disliking plates, surely. And I mean, I'm not blaming OP in the slightest at all. It's a not the arsehole from me. You got her on camera, literally standing up, peeking around the corner to make sure you're gone and then throwing the plate on the floor. That's unhinged. And I really want to know what's going through the husband's mind on this. He's been told that his sister and has seen a video of his sister intentionally smashing plates that were inherited plates from OP's grandmother. So pretty special, I'd say. And he's just like, oh, you've really upset her. <laughs> oh, come on, man. But Lady Ramos here says, not the asshole. You are amazing. You have nothing to apologize for. Your sister-in-law does have lots of things to apologize for, though. OP says, I do feel bad that I embarrassed her. I spoke with their mum today and she and my father-in-law have my back and I should demand her to pay for the place and if she doesn't they would. I'm not going to make anyone do that. I got them from my grandma so they were special to me. Money can't help the sadness of not having them back. And I know it's probably way too late now and I know the, the broken bits of plates are probably gone but you know I've been watching a lot of antique road show <laughs> and there's this thing which you guys probably all know about already but it's new to me. And I have to go with the English pronunciation here of Kintsugi, where it means joining with gold and you can get kits to do that. And it looks really pretty. I just sort of wondered, would that be something that OP could do? But I know it's probably too late anyway. But Meg says, not the arsehole. Your husband and your sister-in-law's boyfriend are arseholes though. You inherited those from your grandmother. Sister-in-law has something seriously wrong with her mentally. Who breaks someone else's plate just because they aren't her style? Who cares about someone else's plate? It's a goddamn plate and it's not her house. She's behaving like a child. She deserves to be treated like one and called out. What a psycho. Does she display any other type of aggressive behaviors to you? She sounds jealous and is throwing a tantrum like a toddler. Opie says, We were totally fine before this. We've never been like super close, but enough to grab a coffee and get our nails done together. I've been married into the family now for six years and I love my in-laws. She was mildly passive aggressive in May when she asked if her boyfriend could live with us while they were having a small issue. But this would have been during the plate and cup breaking. And one more comment from OK Yesterday who says not the arsehole and I don't get why your husband is not with you on this. Those plates had sentimental value. You've been noticing it for a long time and talked to him multiple times. He brushed you off. You even have a proof your sister-in-law does it on purpose. Multiple times, should I say again. And he still sides with that immature child. Who couldn't ask you for a change of plates if it bothered her so much? You don't owe her any apologies. You should have a proper convo with your hubby to get his attitude straight. Now, I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Now, just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories. Your love, your support, your time always means the absolute world to me. So thank you so much for being involved. And hopefully, I will see you in the next one. Take care and much love.